Welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here tonight. We're live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake, playing live also in St. Paul now uh, for going on about a month that we're live, and we're glad to have St. Paul aboard. Uh, fascinating show today. It's just stuff is unbelievable, but it happens a lot. My guest will be Andrew Henderson, who uh, has been harassed extensively, in my opinion, by the sheriffs and the uh, police officers in the in the area, and there's just no excuse for it, but it happens. What you will learn on this show will protect you, will protect your liberties, and you're going to find out ways on how to do that, and it's important that you spend the time to study, to understand how our government works, what rights you have, because there are people out there trying to take away your liberties and your rights, and you need to know how to defend yourself. Uh, so uh, watch this show. But before we get into that, uh, it's Memorial Day weekend coming up, and a little piece of history I found out today. Hopefully, if you've been searching Facebook, uh, you're going to find out about Memorial Day. But it was started on May 1st, 1865 in Charleston, South Carolina. And it was to honor 257 dead Union soldiers who had been buried in a mass grave in a Confederate prison camp. Uh, they dug up the bodies and worked for two weeks to give them a proper burial as grateful as gratitude for fighting for their freedom. These were all black soldiers uh, in the Union Army. And so there was a parade of about 10,000 people led by 2,800 black children uh, where they marched, sang songs, and celebrated. And I just want you to think about Memorial Day and look at your uh, neighbor, your friend, your family members. Just look them in the eye and say, you're one of those dead persons that was buried in an unmarked grave. You know, just think about that, that that person who fought for your liberties uh, and for your freedoms that person that you're looking in the eye could be just taken away just like that in a war. I mean, war is a terrible deal and it's bad, but some of these people are fighting for our liberties. Uh, unfortunately, many, many people are not and are, and are abusing the liberties they think they have, and that is not uh, a good thing. But Memorial Day, that's how it was started, um, to remember 257 dead Union soldiers who had been married, buried in a mass grave. Can you imagine your own uh, wife, your own child, your own uh, parents being buried in an uh, unmarked mass grave? Uh, not, not a good deal. Anyway, that's how Memorial Day was started. On some other national, well, this isn't national, this is international news. Um, where. <sighs> This is something that's happening in the wars in the Middle East and the religious wars going on. But in Syria, uh, two teen boys were crucified for being Christians. This doesn't really make the news. Of course, you've heard on the news the, the woman that is going to be uh, sentenced to death or has been sentenced to death but gets to give life to her child. And then uh, in a couple weeks here after she gives birth, uh, she'll be uh, executed. And that's just some of the brutality of the um, Muslim faith. And these are the moderate Muslims that are doing it in this case. But if you want to find out more, just Google Muslims crucified two teen boys for being Christians, and uh, you'll get more information on that. Um, so, and then you can look on my past shows when it's dealing with the Muslim Brotherhood and what they're trying to do. Uh, now on other aspects of killing here. Here's what the now president said. Babies wouldn't die so much if we just killed them before they died. Those were her words. If we just killed them before they died, then they wouldn't be as many deaths. And that's just some of the, in my opinion, some of the um, brain damage that's going on in some of these movements that say we got rights, but you don't. We're going to take your right away your right because we have other rights that exceed your right to live. Uh, and I want to set off this program here with the, the, the kind of the thought process. What's going on in our uh, law schools 
today and why a lot of the harassment on liberties take place, why lawyers don't know what they're doing or how to defend you, a number of them. And this is by Justice Scalia. Here's what he has to say. In more than a few law schools, including some of the most prestigious, the University of Chicago, for example, it is possible to graduate without ever having studied the First Amendment. Can someone really call himself an American lawyer who has that gap in his compendious knowledge of the law? And can a society that depends so much upon lawyers for shaping public perceptions and preserving American traditions regarding the freedoms of speech and religion afford so ignorant a bar? You don't realize how, I mean, I've said this on the show over and over again, that our law schools here in Minnesota don't teach the Constitution. I've gone, talked to attorneys, did you take a class on it? What was it? Was it teaching the Constitution or was it trying to manipulate the Constitution regarding a particular subject matter? And in, in, in the courtroom, in and outside the courtrooms, I'm asking these lawyers, did you take a class? And, and then they tell me, well, at first I ask them, well, what law school did you go to? And um, they tell me, and I go, oh, you didn't have a class on the Constitution, did you? And they go, how do you know? Well, they, because you ask them, <laughs> they don't have it. And it's just a tragedy, and Justice Scalia brings that out. And that's important um, so that you have an understanding that you need to ask these questions of your attorney. Do you understand the Constitution? Can you defend me on my constitutional rights? Have you had experience doing this? Because many of these attorneys don't. And just uh, last year, um, I think it was in 2000, well, I don't know when this was decided, but the Millbrook case, because you have a lot of judges, you have a lot of public servants, police officers, city council members, city managers, saying they have sovereign immunity, meaning by their job position, they have immunity from prosecution. That'd be even prosecutors. Uh, but the Supreme Court ruled in Mill, Millbrook v. or Millbrook versus the United States that no, they don't have that sovereign immunity. If they operate outside of the law, they can be charged and convicted just as anybody else can be. If they're operating under this color of law, saying it's the law, I'm gonna, this is the law, I'm telling you what to do, and you're not doing it, when what they're telling you to do is illegal, then they're operating outside the color of law. They, don't, they give up their sovereign immunity. That's my understanding of this court case. What's really interesting about this case, the person who fought for this immunity, or fought for having public officials charged with a crime, uh, wrote it down in pencil on a piece of paper, and it made it all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court, because that's all he had to work with in the prison that he was at, and he ends up winning. Uh, nice deal and way to go, uh, Mr. Milbrook. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, and that's been a big case coming up now. Minnesota legislatures have immunity from arrest, even from drunk driving. Well, you know what? That's how the law is written, but the real reality is if somebody challenged that, they wouldn't have that immunity, okay? Because it's a law in it that violates the Constitution. And... I think somebody should challenge that. And we have a, a I know of at least one person running for uh, office that has had uh, used, pulled that uh, get out of jail free card a couple of times. But when it, you as an individual, whether you're a lawmaker or not, commit a crime um, that violates somebody's constitutional rights, you should be held accountable to that. Now, I don't know that drunk driving would violate anybody's constitutional right. Uh, I can see a disorderly conduct done because of that, but uh, that's a whole nother discussion uh, in and of itself. Um, now we're going to get, uh, all right, before, 
Well, another headline news, two Democrat officials from Indiana were convicted of ballot fraud. Chairman Dutch Morgan from St. Joseph County was convicted of felony conspiracy to commit petition fraud and forgery. Dustin Blythe, who served on Board of Elections, was charged with felony forgery and several counts of making a false petition. Both, convic both were convicted for submitting fake names and signatures on petitions that were designed to get Obama and Hillary on the 2008 primary ballots. You know, and now it's 2014, 16, six years before the conviction uh, came out. But they're actually saying that Obama wouldn't have been on the primary, it's a primary ballot. This is uh, in, in that uh, county, it's a county in Indiana. So would have changed things, who, you know, who knows? But he wouldn't have been on the ballot. And, but in the overall scheme, it would, the, the people that were defrauded in this were the Democrats uh, who wanted Hillary or, you know, but the process was used to deceive people and falsehoods were done in order to get a particular way. So to say there's not voter fraud uh, or uh, the election process isn't, doesn't have fraud, that'd be a mistake. Uh, so we remember our courts, <clears throat> and it's we, the people here, that have to keep our courts accountable and to hold them accountable. And the question is, are you doing that? Are you doing what's necessary to keep that accountability? And so right now we're in election season where if you want to run for office, you need to go down to the Secretary of State's office or to your county officials if it's a city council seat and sign up. You have from May 20th, which is now the 22nd, to June 3rd, uh, and you can sign up and you can run for office. And so I, you know, on this show, my interest is the judiciary. So I've looked so far and out of the, well, I'm going to estimate around 100 seats are open for the judiciary, two in the Supreme Court. In the Supreme Court right now, there's one challenger to Wilhelma Wright, and the person's name is John Hancock. <laughs> so I don't know if it's a real one, but the phone number's there. Uh, does not have a website, but I'm, uh, I don't remember if there was one, but I'm going to call, give him a call, find out what he's doing. I also have an understanding that somebody is also going to run against David Lillehog, but hasn't signed up yet. W you know, who knows? But out of all these hundred seats, right now there's only three seats, three seats where they're contested. Uh, a number of seats nobody signed up for, I'd say probably five, well, five to ten. Uh, but this is about our open election process where we the people decide who our servants are and our judiciary is going unchecked, unaccountable, because nobody's running against a lot of these judges. And the whole reason for that, they got the incumbent behind their name, and there's an unwritten rule, and the Minnesota Bar, though, writes out that rule, if you're running for judge, that you will not get a political party endorsement. You can get endorsement from anybody else in any other organization, but not from a political party, which is a total violation of the constitutional rights. And that's why Justice Scalia's statement comes into effect. Well, who cares about your constitutional rights? If we can intimidate, intimidate you into agreeing, something, into agreeing to something that violates your constitutional right, what does that matter? It doesn't matter to them because they win, you lose. So... Um, and, and right now, uh, with people like uh, Andrew Henderson, your, your rights are being protected by these citizen journalists that are getting you the information because a lot of people aren't out there giving the information that you need to know. So we're winding down to getting Andrew on, but I just got to have a, I just two issues that are just, it's just crushing that these things are happening. A University of Virginia student sues the state uh, and the, um, these are the alcohol police, ABC agents, I forget what that acronym is for, for $40 million. And what happened there is these three girls went into the store, in my understanding of the story, went into the store, bought some water that was in a bottle, green bottle, 
uh, bought some snacks, uh, were headed over to a party, and when they get in their car, they're surrounded by seven agents and uh, arrested uh, for buying alcohol. And it was water. <laughs> just, just amazing. And, uh, you know, you got to understand there's many people out there who fake being police. And if you understand her mindset, going 20-year-old, going into the store, bought water, and all of a sudden seven people are ar around you with guns drawn, flashing their badges, and you're going, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. What's going on? There are fake police out there. So they try to call the police. They try to, uh, they call 911. Uh, they try to get out of the place, ended up getting their um, windows broken, uh, were arrested for having alcohol, which was only water. <laughs> they, there was no alcohol in there. Never did drugs, never did alcohol, never did anything. But she's still in the state for $40 million. Either way, let's say it was alcohol they had. Really, you're going to do that? You're going to have that procedure where you got seven agents? You know, they've watched her. Obviously, they knew she wasn't drunk. You know, why don't you just pull her over and uh, do the right process rather than this? It's just unbelievable. So, again, understand this. Overreaction for something that wasn't a crime, it's going to cost you the taxpayer, uh, at least in Virginia, for this activity. Wisconsin, a girl is charged. She's hit by a uh, police officer going through an inter intersection. The officer ran the intersection. Uh, the girl did not. The officer then charged her while she had a broken neck uh, with a DUI for running the intersection and causing the accident. The officer wrote up a report, said this is what, is, this is what took place. Fortunately, there was a video camera, and it was the opposite. The officer ran the stop sign or stoplight and hit this gal. She's got a broken neck. She had, she was bad off physically uh, since she was three years old, but, you know, due to cancer and, and stuff. But he gives her a ticket. Fortunately, she had to go to the hospital. They did a drug test. No drugs, no alcohol, 0 .00, but he charges her uh, for DUI and it's not there. Still had to go, my understanding, still had to go through the process uh, of a jury, and uh, it's, it's bad. Now, we've, I've told you we've had Michelle McDonald on the show, got stopped by police, um, accused her of DUI, and this is an attorney. She knows her rights. She says, I want to go straight to the judge. This officer gave her a ticket, let her criminal child with charges were filed against her for DUI and she goes to the hospital instead of going to the court the, the police officer let her go a good thing to do for someone who's under DUI right uh, but he lets her go she and her husband go straight to the hospital get a blood test zero zero September 15th is the jury trial date unbelievable that the charges haven't been dropped the police know, everybody knows that it's zero, zero, but they're not going to drop the charges. It's the job of the officers to get exculpatory evidence to make, to evidence that shows it's not the case. Unbelievable stuff that's going on with our officers. Where are they getting this training? Are they just this naive? Are they being purposely trained this way? That's why we have our guest on today, <laughs> Andrew Henderson. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, and I've kind of really set the stage here for a lot that's going on in our court system, and you have been through it. Yes, I have. <clears throat> uh, and it's not pleasant, is it? No, it's not. No, no. Um, they, the, the, the way the court system treats the citizens is, is absolutely appalling. Well, and, it, and it's the whole process in there. It's not just the court system. It's the executive branch is where most of us get it first is from the executive branch, in this case the police officers, right. um, saying that you did something that you didn't do or whatever, or, or did do that was legal and it was illegal. 
And so you have to go through an extensive, how long did this whole process take? Uh, nearly 16 months. Okay, 16 months. Yeah. Well, okay, that's a long time. It is though. a long time. That's uh, two pregnancies almost. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know why I put in those terms, <laughs> but I think what I want to do here first is let's play your uh, video and uh, the, f you know, I forgot a video. I'm out of line here. Uh, I'm, we're going to play this first video, get back into your situation, but this, uh, it kind of gives an overall philosophy here of what's going on and what happens behind the scenes. This is a Project Veritas video where people go underground and uh, in this case it deals with funding on, on um, oil issues, but the deal with it is what happens behind the scenes that you don't see. And that's what I, what, what we're going to tie this back into the police. What are they being told? So let's watch this Project Veritas, and I'll tie it all back in later. Sorry about that. Let's watch it. On March 27, 2014, Academy Award Governor Ed Begley Jr., Academy Award nominated actress Mariel Hemingway, and Sundance Award winning producer Josh Dekel were caught on tape at the Beverly Hills Hotel meeting with a man named Muhammad, who they believed to be the son of a Middle Eastern oil family dynasty, to discuss the funding of the next anti-fracking film to the tune of $9 million. Muhammad was introduced to them through citizen journalists posing as ad executives purporting to represent Muhammad and his family. Uh, if uh, Washington, D.C. continues fracking, America will be uh, energy efficient, and then they won't need our oil anymore. Our motivation is, uh, my motivation, my client is, we're, we're, we want to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to help please, his bottom line, you know. It's really, we're going to get, uh, you're in with us on, on this side, right? Oh yeah, knowing where the money comes from. It's only at this table. This table, that doesn't go farther than this table. No, absolutely, I would never say that. Washington and Hollywood are a lot like, it's all an illusion. Yes. Yeah. 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 There you get a glimpse of how things happen or can happen behind the scene. So my question, now Veritas exposed the air, acorn, uh, pro problems with acorn and what they were doing pertaining to voting, but um, things happen behind the scene. We don't get to see a lot that's happening behind the scene and something's happening behind the scene in regards to our sheriffs and our police force, their education, the courts. Uh, that is conspiring to take away our, our liberties in the guise of protecting our liberties. And so we're going to kind of explore that a little bit, and that's why Andrew Henderson is here. Uh, so let's just get into a video you made, sure. well done, and uh, it's kind of a clip of what you went through, and we're going to we'll make some comments after that. All right, so let's roll it. There's a, a story in the Pioneer Press today. It's about a guy who was filming some police work. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting. And had a uh, sheriff's deputy come over out of the blue in the middle of performing this police work and confiscating his video camera. His camera? I'm Andrew Henderson. On October 30th, 2012, I had my camera taken away from me by the Ramsey County Sheriff's officers for filming in a public location. I grew up inner city, you know, you see things that police do and it sticks in your head. 
And uh, as I've gotten older, I, I, I've become more proactive about it. I, I wouldn't call myself an activist by any means. I, I just do it when I, when I can. When I see something, I film something. I was charged with disorderly conduct and obstruction of justice. The whole time during the incident, I was sitting on a bench at least 30 feet away from the scene until Jackie Molnar came up and snatched the camera from my hand. Fortunately, I was recording audio on my cell phone, which captured part of the incident. The following audio was taken from a four-minute clip Andrew recorded. They are in order. You just put my camera. What's your name? Jackie Molnar. Jackie Molnar. Jackie Molnar. Jackie Molnar. You're taking my camera. I'm doing a lawful thing right now. Filming is, is legal. Okay, but if I end up on YouTube, I'm going to be upset. Can I get a receipt for that? Um, I'll give you my name and case number, yeah. That's about it. Alright, you're lawfully put the video camera for me. Can I do that, Summer? Note that Andrew is talking to Jackie Moner's colleague, who though he admitted he didn't claim that Andrew's filming was illegal, sat by and did nothing as his partner stole Andrew's property. 561? Alright. Nothing I'm doing is illegal. Nothing is illegal. Huh? I didn't say anything. What's illegal? No, no, you didn't. I know you didn't. You didn't say anything that it was illegal or anything. But it is legal and you're, you're, you're taking away my, your partner is taking away my private property. And I'm doing a legal act. I was well within my rights to film that interaction. The next day, Andrew went to the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office to retrieve his camera. I'm here to pick up property that was uh, taken from me last night. Yes, I understand that you had a complaint about a call that came in last night. Your device was taken? Yes, it was. So what were the circumstances of it? Because we're not aware. We're I looking was for a report. There isn't any. Filming and deputy. Moment. Moment. Jackie, you good? Uh, Something on my video camera in clear violation of my first amendment. Right. Okay. Why did she take it? What were the circumstances? I was just sitting on a bench filming outside of my residence. I can tell you, sure, I had no idea about this call or right. anything about it. Andrew learned that there wasn't even a report filed about his camera being taken. Two weeks later, Andrew returned and tried to get the police report about the incident. Instead, they told him to wait until court or things would be sorted out. It can get resolved yeah. uh, in court if it has to go that far, but mm -hmm. you, know, you can always talk to the, to the, to the city attorney about this and, and, and give them dismiss charges after like one year or something like that. Something that would, is, would be a reasonable um, agreement amongst all parties involved. Right. Well, I'm, I'm going to plead innocent. Okay, that's fine. I, I don't, and I don't feel, feel that, that, that is certainly yeah, I don't feel right. that I did anything wrong. I followed through the police report that Deputy Muller not only tried to go through my camera, but also brought it home with her overnight before bringing it back to the sheriff's office. That alone is a clear violation of the chain of custody that she supposedly knows about, having worked for three decades as a Ramsey County Sheriff's Deputy. When Andrew finally did get his camera back, the footage was deleted. Here in Minnesota, we have Data Practice Act requests. I filed a Data Practice Act request to the city of Little Canada to find out how much money has already been spent on my case. The total so far is $5,500. Kudos to Andrew for making his situation public and for being so thorough. He not only got coverage in the local print and radio media, but also on coplock.org, Photography is Not a Crime, and elsewhere. All that attention eventually brought him some legal help. I am grateful to be able to announce that the Minnesota American Civil Liberties Union has decided to take on my legal defense. My trial is scheduled for the week of the 18th of February, 2014 but it has been postponed in the past. I've had two different prosecutors, four different judges, and the case has lasted over a year. And we'll see if it happens this time. If you'd like to help me in this matter, I urge you to call the City of Little Canada, the prosecuting attorney, Kevin Beck, and Judge Alshaus, and voice your concern about the taxpayer's money being spent on this case. I have a clear conscience, and I'm at peace with my actions. I acted lawfully. First Amendment principles and federal case law established that a constitutional right. And while doing so, I did not act disorderly, nor did I obstruct a legal process. What reasonable expectation of privacy does a copper have in public? The answer is none. I encourage you all to keep filming. Even if you see someone else filming, help out. The content you capture might be their best witness. Better yet, get a streaming app. I just hope you all get here. I just want to encourage you to uh, stand up for yourself, stand up for those in your community. If you see something going on with a police employee, film. Take the time, you know. Uh, if you have a smartphone, get a free streaming app and make sure you know how to use it real easy. You have uh, here in, 
in Minnesota and everywhere you have the right to film police employees uh, out in public. So make sure you do it and uh, make the world a better place. Andrew J. Henderson here. Just want to say, I hope you keep filming, I hope you keep observing, I hope you keep holding the police accountable for their actions. That's a great tagline. If I end up on YouTube, <laughs> I'm going to be upset. I notice you put that on a lot of your videos I, now. I, I do. I end my videos with that now. Well, good. And I. So what if she's upset? Yeah. Uh, we should be upset. And I'm not upset that it's on YouTube. Uh, but you were going to have a trial, and it took place. Yes. And? And uh, not guilty. I've not heard. guilty. I, yep. Well, fantastic. That's the way it should be. Yes. So let's kind of summarize this, just to make sure people clearly understand. Mm -hmm. There was a, you at that time, you did not know, but there was a medical emergency where you lived. Right. In the apartment building. Right. Um, I had no idea there was a medical emergency. Uh, there, How would you know? No, there, there was a you know, couple ambulance guys and a, a couple uh, sheriff's deputies walking an individual out the uh, door. I mean, he, he wasn't on a stretcher. Um, you know, he wasn't in any distress as far as I could tell. But, and you, a person could say, an ambulance? Well, obviously it's a medical emergency. But no, because most ambulances show up to crimes of violence. Right. So it's a crime. So all emergencies, or majority of emergencies, could be medical. But that's irrelevant right. to the situation. So you're outside. You see this happening. Why do you film? Why did you film? Um, because I, 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 was, I, was, I was concerned of what was going on. Um, they walked this individual out, um, and then they patted him down. At, at, at first, I thought it was a, a, a medical thing. Okay. And then they patted him down. I've, I've, I've never seen the police pat somebody down during a medical situation before. And I found that interesting, so I pulled up my camera and started filming. And how far away were you? Uh, about 30 feet. Okay. It's so... But you were on a balcony or a deck or I, I, uh, or... I was on a concrete pad on the ground on a park bench, just sitting there after work. It, it just in a natural location? Natural location, yeah, uh, right outside the door. And all this starts unfolding in front of you. Right. So if you were dragged into a court of law, you would have been a witness. You would have been an eyewitness. Right. Okay, but you couldn't record, according to this... Jackie Molnar, you couldn't record what you would have been able to testify to in court as to what you saw. That's correct. Okay, that, that's her <laughs> that's, logic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's her opinion. Uh, so she took the camera, and obviously it took you by surprise. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, I, I've never had a camera just taken out of my hands before. And... Um, so, that, I mean, that was unusual, and you did a great job of defending yourself. You know, um, I, you, you really can't do much better than that. You know, there's, there's one part there where the, the, the other sheriff, I believe, right. said, uh, well, you, you didn't say it was illegal what you did. You know, you know, so what if you come back with the right question of, did I do anything illegal? Right. And if he would have said no, then give me my camera back. But he wasn't put on the spot. That's all right. It shouldn't have done it anyway. You know, it's like my friend that got, uh, police showed up and searched his house because his garage door was open. open. What's wrong with your garage door being open? It's your property. You can leave it open if you want. You know? <laughs> so what's wrong with you filming out in public? This is an amazing thing. This is out in public. I go down to the legislature, film all the time because it's out in public. Right. When I go to private locations, I have to get permission because it's private. You're out in public. There's no restrictions. No, not at all. Uh, whatsoever. Uh, amazing uh, that this took place. Um, when, well, here's, here's the big thing here that just, that Jack, Jackie Molnar did that just gets me. 30 years of experience, and she doesn't know the chain of command for um, possession of evidence. Okay. So what did she do? Well, she, uh, she wrote in her report that she took my camera and took it home with her overnight. 
uh, she also put that she tried to review the contents of, uh, of, of the camera, which also violates the, uh, the, the policy of the Ramsey County Sheriff's Office. Uh, I just, I, I mean, that just, that's not a light thing. I mean, that's super, super huge. It is. That, I mean, after 30 years of experience, knowing that she's not IT, uh, the um, uh, technical department, um, the chain of command for evidence, uh, it goes in a bag and it goes to your uh, detectives. Right. And I mean, the, the thing that bothers me the most about this issue is how many times has, has uh, Jackie done this to other uh, cases? And we don't know, do we? No. Uh, and there's really no way to find out, is there? I, I don't know how to find out that type of information. Right. Um, so the other thing that was interesting, when you were trying to find your camera, of course, they had no record of it the next day. No. They had no case number. No. She, she hadn't reported it yet. She hadn't reported no. it yet. And then you go back two weeks later, and they know about your case. Right. And they've, they've had some discussions, obviously. The thing that disturbed me about the, the, the power of suggestion is very, very real and very strong. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, whoever you're talking to, the sheriff, deputy, or whoever, uh, was making a strong suggestion that, well, maybe if you just plead to a one-year deal and after that everything goes away. You know, that was a strong suggestion. It was. And, and I've seen people in courtrooms where that's been given to them, where they should plead not guilty and fight it, mm -hmm. but that strong suggestion wrecks their life. It does, yeah, definitely. Because they do that, and then, then they're a target already. Right. Then any time it's on their record, driver's license, they get pulled over, the officer's looking for something. Right. And, and, and then, they're, then they're messed up. Big well, time. And not only that, but for, for, for employment, too, that's going to come up and, on a background check for jobs, for housing, and, you know, ruin their chances of, of, of uh, Well, it sounds like you have a little experience in that. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, yes. how was that, how has this whole process affected you for jobs? Well, um, when it was going on, I was laid off from my, my previous job, and nobody would hire me because it would come up on background checks that I had two charges pending. Were you laid off because of this? No, no, I was laid okay. off just because it was a, you know. Downturn in yeah, business. And yeah, okay. the economy. But then you were, there were openings in other jobs, and they right. wouldn't hire you because of this. Did they tell you that? Yes, yes. So the background check because there was open cases. Oh, okay. Uh, and even though they knew it was, and you told them, and they can see, it was because you took pictures in a legal setting. Right. Well, most places have a, uh, a policy about, you know, criminal records, so. Okay, it's the policy. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, they, most of these places have video cameras themselves. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> in a private place, which they can do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's amazing. Okay, uh, well, this is not the um, only time no. uh, that you've been stopped. But I tell you, the, the power of pictures and sound are, are fascinating and can really protect somebody. Uh, so let's go uh, watch this uh, next video of the lights. Uh, that's for the studio there when Andrew got pulled over for having a light out. Let's see what takes place. Hello. What's up, do you have your license and proof of insurance? I do. You stopped it because your passenger side headlight is out. Passenger side? Yep. Cool. Are you the person that usually does the maintenance on the vehicle? I am. I don't have my insurance Were you card. Were that it was out? No, I wasn't. You don't have the insurance card with you or it doesn't have insurance? I do have the insurance card with me. I do have insurance. What's the company? Uh, American Family. Uh, are, you, are you the person that purchased it? The insurance? Yeah. Yes. All right, stay on the vehicle. I'll be back up. For sure. Oh, jeez. 
Right. Mr. Anderson? Yes. I'm issuing a citation for the equipment violation yes. that you were previously cited for a headlight that was out on the same vehicle. Driver's side. Yeah. yeah. So, so, do you have any so questions about how to handle the citation? The fix it ticket or what? No, it's a citation. A citation? Yeah. There's a phone number in the upper right hand corner you can call. If you want a court date and time, wait two, three to ten days and then call that number. Not a problem. If uh, you want to pay the citation, there's a fine schedule inside the envelope. Cool. Can I get your name and badge number? Uh, Joe Cox, COX, badge number 208. It's on the ticket as well. Thank you. Any other questions? No citation for no insurance or what? No, I called the insurance company and they told me it's valid. Cool. If you have the card with you, it'll go a lot faster so we don't have to Yeah, call. I left it at home this morning. Get the card in the vehicle. Any other questions, you can call the number in the upper right-hand corner. You're free to go. Thank you. Signing up on YouTube, I'm going to be up back. Oh, well, he's back up. He, that one's up on YouTube, too. <laughs> um, lights are out on one of your lights in, the, in your car. Right. And eight months earlier, you had a light out on the other side. Right. And so the officer comes up there saying, implying that it's the same light. Um, I believe so, yes. That's yeah. how I That's interpreted that, what he said. And then you told him no it's a the light that was out was on the other side right um, just gave that to him uh, the cordial conversation you did a great job um, it is not normal that a police officer wouldn't give a fix-it ticket right yeah I one of the interesting parts to me about that is that there was no uh, record of, of, of the other stop for having the, the headlight out eight months prior. There's no record of it? No. Um, the reason that the police officer knew about it is from watching my YouTube channel. How did you know he watched your YouTube channel? I got the dash cam video and they were discussing it in the, in the squad car. Really? Yes. Oh, and this was Officer Cox. Had you run into him before? No, that was my first uh, interaction with, with, with that officer. Um, Eight months prior, I, I was stopped by the uh, St. Anthony Police. Okay. Um, and this guy was with what department? Um, Roseville. Roseville. Yes. But he was talking to somebody during the stop about the eight months prior. Right. And who was he talking to? I'm not sure. Um, all, all, all that was on the uh, dash cam video was, was the person's voice. Okay. Um, and it's for something totally different. Right. Uh, that, that's just bad behavior on a police officer's part. Right. That's, uh, that's the police state. Yes. Uh, kind of the militarization of the police state sure. or, you know, um, oh. taxation by citation. Uh, there, oh, man, there's so many avenues to go down here. We've got a couple more videos we've got to show. First of all, Jackie Molnar, that sheriff, has she been held accountable? Uh, not at all, no. Um, is she still a sheriff in Ramsey County? She retired from, from the sheriff's office, and uh, she came back recently as a bailiff at the Ramsey County Courthouse downtown. And that's still part of the sheriff's? Yes, it so is. So she's retired after 30 years. She's picking up a pension. Her pen, her, you know, if you retire, that the, means you start picking up your pension. Right. And, but now she's hired on. I mean, she's really milking the system here. Yes. And no accountability. So if no. you or I do something wrong, you get arrested or charged. If she violates your constitutional rights, she gets to retire and get another job. Yes. There seems and to be a... No, any disciplinary action taken against her that you know of? Not, not as right. far as I know. Are you going to take any action against her? I, uh, I don't know yet. I don't know? I haven't decided okay. anything. Well, I hope you do. Because, and I know that's a hard thing. And we're going to see another video why it's a hard thing, because they can continue to harass you. Um, and it needs to happen. Um, and I hope you got a good support system. And, and I know you got a lot of support system because uh, Citizens United, not Citizens, Communities United Against Police Brutality right. uh, has encouraged you. Yes. <laughs> to yeah. what extent, I don't know. Uh, but that's a good group watching out against police misconduct. And then um, ACLU mm -hmm. came to your defense and defended you in court, and you won. Um, so any, any other groups that have helped out? Uh, Coplock.org. 
That's a group. Okay. That's, a group, yeah. That's where that video we just showed was from. Right, right. They but you put it together. Uh, that was actually uh, 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 Pete Ear. Uh, oh. Yeah. Um, he's one of the founders of, of Cop Block. And okay. Yeah. He's, Ex excellent he's, he's, job. He's, he's been a, a, a big support to me. So. Okay. But, uh, wow. Um, well, let's get into uh, the next video. Oh, the other question. Was this stop before or after the um, videotaping of um, the what you were charged with? The after. It was after. It was after, yeah. Okay. So the next video that's coming up uh, is the, the max stop number one. We're going to play that. This is a, a little lengthy here, but uh, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Well, you're... you're you went, well, it's, it's self-explanatory. You were going to go through the McDonald's drive through but then decided not to. And because you did that, you got pulled over. Mm -hmm. Let's watch the beginning of this. Hi. Drive license for home insurance, please. You bet. You pull into McDonald's like you're going to get food, and then you go around me and you decide to leave. So did you go inside and get it, or when did you get it? Excuse me? Go ahead. So did you go through the drive-thru and then go around again, or did you go inside and get it, or how'd that work? Excuse me? Your Fifth Amendment rights? Okay, well then give me your driver's license, Mr. Fifth Amendment rights. You realize the Fifth Amendment is only for use inside a court of law, correct? Okay, Andrew, why do you need to have the right to remain silent? What did you do illegal that you feel the need to, to avail yourself of the right to remain silent? Got it. 24-37. Their phone right, right at Brady, 377 Charles George Edward. Great Durango occupied two times. Can I get a second squad? The driver has told me that he's going to keep his rights to remain silent. Second squad, the Brady phone right. This, this is amazing that a police officer. Oh, who was that? Was that Sheriff or? Yeah, Ramsey County Sheriff. Ramsey County Sheriff would uh, not understand your right to remain silent. Right. And, and, and that is so suspicious that they need uh, backup. Well, well, there's two suspicions there. The first, that you decided not to go through the drive through at McDonald's. Yeah, very suspicious. That, uh, that's just, man, I, I don't know how many people have been pulled over for that. <laughs> Hey, you got a target on your back, he but did. he did not know. Right. Or he really acted well, but he didn't know it was you. Um, uh, so he asked for your driver's license. Mm -hmm. And what did you say? I, I mean, I, I've heard it in another video, but. Sure. I, I handed my driver's license. I yeah. got He's, my insurance from. And you told him yeah. it was in the glove box. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. got it for him, and then I said, I'm going to remain silent. Yeah. Which is your right. Yeah, it is. You don't have to be told your rights, given the Miranda warning, right. uh, which uh, you have the right to remain silent. Um, anything you say can and will be used against you, <laughs> can and will be, emphasis on will be. So you have a right not to say anything. Right. He stopped you. He detained you. Right. You were being detained. So he has to have a reason in order to do that. And now he's searching for a reason. Right. That was amazing. He violated your rights. He didn't have a reason. No. And now he's trying to find the reason. Uh, it's just terrible. What was this officer's name? Um, I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it's, it's said there. I, I don't either. Um, it will be on the video in a bit. Um, so you did everything right. And now he's upset. I've never heard this. You know what? You know who knows how to defend their rights? Criminals? and lawyers because the criminals who have been through the system have heard it all from their defense attorneys here's what you do here's what you don't do don't say this don't say that so the first time around they didn't defend their rights the second time around 
they defended their rights, but you knew your rights. Right. You saw it. I mean, there are people out there that figure things out ahead of time, and any lawyer that goes to law school figures things out ahead of time. So criminals, lawyers, and then people who study, you know, and, and have an eye out for this. Uh, and so they're surprised, and then they're suspicious. Right. If you're defending your rights, you know something about the law. So either you're an attorney, which they didn't think you were an attorney, by the way, I, I thought they behaved. Um, and then they just tried to um, bully you later on mm -hmm. <laughs> into giving up your rights. Okay, let's see the next video clip. We're running. Uh, 1420 degrees, 72 down in Northwestern. They've been shut, fired. Shots fired. Okay. Three seven. Can you let the main person you know that I've got two cars? That's enough. Okay, I did not get this guy. So I stop him because I go to McDonald's to get a burger and he drives around like he's going to get one and then he quick zips around me and takes off out of McDonald's and decides that he's not hungry. So I pull him over because it's suspicious. Nobody's going to do that. I walk up to him, ask him for his driver's license and he says, I plead the fifth. And I go, that's actually for you to decide a court of law. All I was going to do is ask you, he goes, why'd you stop me? So I tell him, it's awfully suspicious. People don't usually do that. So I ask him for his charge license, and he goes, I have the right to remain silent. I'm going to do that. And I'm like, dude, what the, you know? So I'm like, you know what? Before I start asking anything else or start looking anywhere else, this guy just started off with the total, well, I don't know if he's a sovereign citizen or what. The other thing that's weird is, when I asked him where he was going, he said he was heading home. He lives on B2. He went totally past his house. So, nothing yet, but it was like he was acting so screwy. I'm like, I don't even know. I already told him to cancel. Andrew, what's the deal, man? Okay, you realize it's very un it's highly unusual for someone to have the position that you're at right now, correct? I suppose. Okay, so why are you so oppositional for something that we would have already been done with had you not been so oppositional? Can you make yourself more clear? Can you make yourself more clear? Yeah. As far as what? What are you talking about? First of all, I've never had anybody claim the fifth when I ask them for their driver's license. Second of all, when I just ask somebody a couple simple questions so that I can either verify that they're not intoxicated or they're not up to something, I've never had anybody tell me that they have the right to remain silent and they're going to exercise that. Okay. Because I actually, unless I'm, I've got you in custody for something, which obviously I don't, no. and I'm asking you questions about a specific crime, that doesn't work either, dude. I don't want to answer any questions. Okay. Ma'am, are you in the same boat as him? Okay. Can I see your license, please, ma'am? Thank you. Andrew, do you still live on County Road B2? Yes, I do. So you got some food in your head at home, but you went past your address? Why don't you hand that over here, ma'am? There's more than one way to get there. Wow. All right, we're running out of time here, but... I want you to go to the last um, about uh, 30 seconds of that video. Don't play it right now, but we'll, we'll get it in. Uh, you did a fantastic job there. Mm -hmm. First of all, shots were fired, some other call, and there ended up being 10 cars around you. Yes. No shots <coughs> fired. Well, I wouldn't go to the shots fire call either. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just amazing. 10 cars checking you out, but the shots fired, who knows how many went there. Um, you, uh, then the story he told to the dispatchers was different 
than what had taken place. Yes. Because he said, he implied that he, you wouldn't give him your name or your um, uh, ID, and you did. Right. Uh, and then he has to go and say, well, are you a sovereign citizen? Well, that's code word for... Troublemaker. Troublemaker, uh, certain groups. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are sovereign citizens, everybody is, but how do you be a sovereign citizen and not be a troublemaker? I, I don't know. <laughs> so what did you take away from this uh, deal? I mean... That the, uh, you know, the police force over-exaggerates many, many things. I mean, this, this, this was a simple traffic stop. It, it didn't require, you know, 10 squad cars and four officers. And, you know, it's, it's, it, they, it, it was blown way out of proportion for a simple traffic stop and somebody exercising their constitutional rights. Yeah, that was amazing. Um, never, he's never had anybody exercise their rights. Of course, we talked about that before. Let's play the last 30 seconds of this clip here because all of a sudden the police officer gets it. He says he gets it. Let's show this. No. 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 Hey, I may be old and not as smart as some people, but a setup is a setup. All right, we missed the part. He finally figured it out it was you. This was the officer that was there when you were videotaping. Right. Uh, the prior one, uh, where you were charged and then found not guilty on. He was the officer that didn't say you were doing anything illegal. Right, yes. He finally gets it. He thinks he's being set up. Um, That's what he said at the end. Yeah, that was a different officer. Oh, okay. it, it, was, it was it was one of the backup officers that. All right. Yeah. Well, we're we're out of time, and I did a terrible job in time management. But folks, go to um, Andrew Holman's website and and Facebook or whatever, and watch what he has to say. Remember, good people don't do. Little money. <laughs> Catch you later.